Let's take a look at a locally bought home bargains, motion sensor security solar light and see how it compares to the cheap Chinese imports with their sometimes shady circuitry and looking at you Timu. Anyway, we have the very large solar panel in the back and this is one of these laminated ones. I'm not overly confident in how long these are going to last, but time will tell. Um, I kind of prefer the ones that are laid on to a printed circuit board material because that way the thermal expansion contraction of the plastics is less likely to stress the silicon cells. I'm not sure how these will last. We've got a little button here which uh, turns on the LEDs. This is where the dusk sensor, where is the dusk sensor? Um, I don't, I think there's only two modes. I think it's, or is it two modes? Oh no, it's got the multiple intensity thing. Okay. It's got the usual stuff. We know what it's got. Um, this clip here for mounting it to the wall screws on and it just sort of like slots on. That's quite handy for taking it in. With many of these things, they recommend taking them in in uh, winter because, well, well, that's a shame because that's when you kind of need them. But that's because uh, at the point that at the temperature that water freezes, zero degrees Celsius, that causes problems with uh, charging uh, lithium cells because the transfer of the lithium ions from one side of the cell to the other through the separator, they don't intercalate into the electrode as well. Uh, what that means is the lithium ions don't merge into the uh, electrode as well as at sort of warmer temperatures. And what that results in is as a layer of um, lithium forming on the electrode and it can actually, because it's concentrated lithium, because it's a more aggressive chemistry, it damages the cell. So we've got one more screw here. I'm just glad that I was able to tell you that just because it gave me time to take out all these screws without pausing. So don't uh, charge your lithium cells when they're very, very cold. Here we go. Is it going to be an 18650 tucked in the end here? I do hope so. It's an 18650. And there is the circuit board. Here is our huge parallel array of LEDs. Um, there's the hot melt glue blob and where it goes through to the solar panel. Let's whip this out. The uh, lithium cell says 2000 milliamp power, which is a, a decent value. Let's not short this out because I am in accommodation at the moment with the smoke detector above me. And really, what we don't want right now is a huge inferno. You guys might want one, but I don't want one. Uh, this is more complicated than normal. Okay, I shall take a picture of this circuit board and reverse engineer it and uh, we can take a look at it. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. The solar panel comes in here and it goes to an LTH7 chip. That's a lithium charge control chip. And it's got a 2K resistor setting about a current of about 500 milliamps max. Although it depends on how much solar uh, energy is being harvested by the solar panel, how much will go into the cell. That goes to the lithium cell connections here. The positive goes straight up to the LED panel. And there is a resistor here for the LED panel as well. And a MOSFET, an A2SHB classic N-channel MOSFET. This chip seems to be dedicated to this task. I don't know if it's a microcontroller or a dedicated passive infrared light chip. This passive infrared sensor is a N219S and then on this side of the circuitry we've got a voltage regulator which is a 65T5 and apparently from what I could see is a 2.5 volt voltage regulator and a push button. There is one oddity, well there's a couple of odd things, there's voltage dividers feeding this chip which does make me think that it is a dedicated chip. Um, and there's also a voltage divider on the button and I'll show you that in the schematic. It's a fairly nice design. Let's put that out of the way and bring in the schematic. So here's the solar panel and it feeds the LTH7 charge control chip with the 2K resistor set in the current about 500 milliamps for this lithium cell. The lithium cell was rated, um, if it's true, 2000 milliamp hour. Uh, there's also a potential divider here which is the dusk sensor, it's providing an analog voltage from the solar panel directly to that chip. Um, so there's a lithium cell and from that point it goes to the voltage regulator and then also feeds the LEDs. Now there is a potential divider here with two 1 megohm resistors bridged by a switch 
going to the input of that chip. That's odd. I wonder if they've used two one meg ohm resistors to create just half the supply voltage so that this chip doesn't get a very uh, high signal from the switch. I'm not sure. I don't know why they didn't do it in the secondary side of the 2.5 volts. Here is a potential divider, 1 meg ohm there, 270k, and there is another chip I've seen in the past with passive infrared lights that uh, it uses potential dividers to set a voltage between the zero volt rail and the supply rail to actually determine a time delay. So that might be the time that the light stays on. The only way to find that would be to basically just put in different values and experiment. Likewise, this 2K resistor might be in feeding internal voltage references or it might actually be maybe sensitivity, but actually slammed right up to the end just to give the maximum sensitivity or time delay. I'm not sure which of these will be doing what without data about this chip, which is anonymous. The passive infrared sensor, I'm not sure if this is any processing already, but it's 9219S, might just be a bare sensor. Actually, no, no, it won't. Could be, because mm, it's got a positive rail and negative rail in the output. That could be a standard sensor. But it's got a pull-down resistor and a decoupling capacitor and then it uh, goes to the output. That's just to provide st a stable signal to the uh, processor here or the control chip. When the control chip decides it wants to turn the LEDs on, there's a MOSFET down here, the A2SHB, the 20K pull-down resistor, and then it's got the LED panel and an onboard 0.82 ohm resistor. Um, and that's then uh, when this uh, sends a signal to the um, MOSFET, it just turns on the LED panel for the desired time. That is it. Not really much else to say. It's a very straightforward, optimised design where all the magic is ultimately down to this chip here doing all the works. And the reason they've used 2.5 volt regulator here is because uh, the pass infrared detectors need a very stable supply voltage. And with the uh, lithium cell having the load in it, it will vary in voltage between say 4.2 volt fully charged and maybe about say 2.5 volts, strange enough, absolutely discharged. That's the point when protection for cutting off but uh, with the load in it, that means that voltage rail can fluctuate up and down. So they often use a voltage regulator well below the typical voltage expected of lithium cell just to provide a nice stable voltage for the full discharge uh, level, um, which allows this circuit to be stable and not start oscillating when it gets the battery starts getting low and it starts start flashing on and off. But that's it. It's not bad. It's an interesting little light. And uh, the one thing I would say is, as with all these, as I think I mentioned earlier on, in winter, which is strange enough when you need it, it's better to bring them in out of the cold because uh, the lithium cells do not like being charged in sub-zero temperatures. But that's it. Very interesting little light. Very logical and sensibly designed.